Welcome to another DIY project. Before calling the professional, maybe it's DIYable. This time, we are talking about raccoon problem in your backyard or front yard. I am gonna show you how to build a portable solution to drive the raccoons away. It's one of the most effective solutions. I have tested it for three years. Not only for raccoons, you can install it on the bed of your truck to drive the trespassers away. Before going into details, you may want to check out the video on how I solved the raccoon problem from pooping and peeing on the patio furniture. I will post that link in the description. For those of you who haven't seen that, I want to recap of what worked and what doesn't work because this will help you to develop a strategy. I can tell you, bird spiking does work if you put it on top of the fence, but it's a little bit ugly. Using chicken wire to seal the bottom of the fence helps too. Yes, raccoon can climb, but it eliminates half of the lazy one who don't want to climb. To protect the patio furniture, I have built spike boards using brad nails and it has been working flawlessly. Of course, electric fence is another option, but if you have a small yard, it may not make sense at all. Portable motion activated water sprinkler is the best, it works for houses don't have fans. Do not trust the internet religiously. I am pretty sure you have seen some of this before. Indeed, I spent so much money and tried all of this and I can tell you none of them worked. To have a quick recap, I bought 5 pounds of cayenne pepper from Amazon. Such a waste of money. They said coffee grind can get rid of raccoon, so I had so many cups of coffee. Nope, it didn't work. Hot pepper sauce didn't work either. Animal repellent granules from Home Depot is a joke. Save your money. I thought going a bit high tech would solve the problem. So I bought the LED predator eyes and ultrasonic animal control from Amazon. They didn't even work on rabbit. Forget about raccoon. I also tried the animal deterrent mat which is made out of plastic with some spikes. I bought two rolls of this and put them on the love seat. On top of that, I wrapped the whole furniture with garden netting before putting the cover on. That's where the raccoon call it home. There was a YouTube video out there telling you to install the aluminum wire on top of the fence. I can tell you it didn't work at all. I saw all kinds of animal running across. I spent over $150 Canadian to buy two types of coyote urine. One is granules and the other one is real urine in a bottle. I have high expectation on this. They didn't work at all. The raccoon is claiming victory. Don't waste your money on coyote urine. You have probably heard about motion activated sprinkler. Yard Enforcer is made by a big manufacturer called Orbit. The quality is pretty decent. There are cheaper brands you can get from Amazon. It's half the price of this, but I'm not sure about that honestly. You will need 4 AA batteries to work. It should last for the whole season. You can hook it up with your garden hose just like that. Yes, it works in a way, but it's not the best. Let me tell you what is the problem. And this is the official description. It said, certain animals are intelligent enough to recognize the pattern and range. They learned how to avoid the spray. Yes, it's talking about raccoon. If your target animals are stupid, then you don't have to worry about this. Basically, you need to constantly move and adjust the sprinkler to different locations. If you have it anchored to the ground, it's very annoying. The second problem is that you turn on the garden hose 24-7. With water pressure from 50 to 60 psi, any malfunctioned or broken garden hose can cause flooding to your yard. That's not fun when you are away from home or sleeping in the middle of the night. Having the garden hose on your deck or on your lawn may become a tripping hazard. This portable solution will solve all those problems. For this project, the first item you need is to buy a water pressure tank. In my case, I bought a 6.5 gallon horizontal pressure tank. If you are living in a house where you pump water from the well instead of using tap water supplied by the city, you should be familiar with this. A pressure tank gives you instant access to well water. Without cycling the pump on and off each time, this reduces the stress on the pump. There are two ways to set this up. There is a technical term called cut in and cut out for the pressure. We will get into that a little bit later. Just follow the column on the right. The factory pre-charge is set to 28 psi. We are going to double check. Yes, it's 28 psi. Perfect. Next, you need to buy this little gadget from Amazon or from your local hardware store. It's the water pressure regulator valve with oil field gauge. If you have a RV camper, you should be familiar with this. Go to the hardware store and shop for the parts to connect everything together. 
The idea is very simple. At the bottom, we have the output connects to the motion activator sprinkler. On the left, we have the water inlet to top up the pressure tank. Of course, we need to add the shut up valves later in the game. But I think you got the idea. We are using Teflon tape on this 1 inch NPT fittings of the pressure tank. Now, this is a 1 inch to 3 quarter of an inch reducer. At the local hardware store, you will get very confused if you don't know what you're looking for. In my case, I look for FIP and MIP. It's the same as NPT. To identify NPT fittings, there's a DIY tips I want to share with you. Usually, Teflon tape or pipe joint compound is needed. At some point, you have to convert NPT fittings to GHT fittings because we are dealing with garden hose. The problem is that at your local hardware store, they label this as FHT and MHT. Indeed, they are the same as GHT. Another DIY tips. To identify GHT, rubber washer is needed. That's your garden hose. You should be very familiar with this. Sounds complicated, isn't it? But life is usually very difficult. Don't give up and all you need is to deal with it. Before putting everything together, we need to do some fine tuning. I am attaching this pressure regulator to my garden hose. As you can see, at our house, the city water supplied is at 60 psi. That's way too high. We need to adjust it down to 50 psi. Remember there were two numbers I talked about. That's the cut in and cut out pressure. In the pump scenario, the pump will start to kick in if the pressure of the tank is lower than 30 psi and it should stop when it reaches 50 psi. We are just following the spec so it won't damage the pressure tank. Perfecto! We have 50 psi. For most of you DIY people, I actually don't recommend using Teflon tape because you may end up having leaking pipe. Even I consider myself as a very experienced DIY person. I got a small leak when I was doing a test. Forget about Teflon tape, I fixed it by using pipe joint compound. This stuff is amazing. It almost guaranteed you won't have any leak. No more leaking. I added a garden hose, shut a valve and a quick connect fittings to make my life easier. I also have two 90 degrees angle fittings because it would take up less space and make the project more elegant. This gray color hose, I took it from my old washing machine. The fittings is GHT. Never throw away the old washing machine hose. You can reuse it in the garden. This will connect to the motion activated water sprinkler. To secure the sprinkler to the tank, I am using some galvanized and stainless steel nuts and screws. It's pretty much self-explanatory. Looking very good. I think the raccoons should be very scared. To use this, first you need to top up the tank. All you have to do is to connect the garden hose and open the valve. Remember we have set the cutout pressure to 50 psi, the regulator will cut off at that point. Even if you got interrupted in the middle of this by the hot single mum across the street and totally forget about this, it won't do any damage to the tank. This Orbit Yard Enforcer has some serious problems. You should be aware of this before you buy. There is a night mode. It's supposed to turn the unit on when it's in the dark. The problem is that if you put it beside the fans or there are some shade, even the sky is not dark, it will turn on the unit. The sprinkler will get activated when the limbs or leaves on the trees are moving. This doesn't happen all the time, but with the right conditions, it did happen to me many times and it's very annoying. There is adjustment to duration and range, but there is no adjustment to the light sensitivity. Of course, they will tell you to reduce the range to solve this problem. That's not the solution. Photocell sensor is not the same as motion sensor. Finally, the intelligence sensor is a marketing gimmick. It just adds more duration between the spray. It's not very helpful at all. To solve this problem, I am using digital water timer and a Y-shaped washing machine hose. Okay, you may be wondering why I have two timers. The problem is that I couldn't find any water timer on the market that let me set the valve open for more than 6 hours. Look at this, the maximum duration is 360 minutes which is 6 hours. My goal is to cover 10 hours of darkness from 10pm to 8am, one timer just doesn't work. 
This is how we set it up. First timer, we set it to start at 10 p.m. with duration 360 minutes, which is 6 hours, and it will stop at 4 a.m. The second timer, we set it up to start at 3.55 a.m., overlapping 5 minutes to the first timer. Then, we set the duration to 245 minutes, which is 4 hours, and it will stop exactly at 8 a.m. To put everything together is very easy. This is the input of the water timer, which will be connected to the output of the pressure tank. We will secure this using my favorite releasable zip tie. This is the output of the timer, which will be connected to the motion activator sprinkler. This is the false positive test case. Did you hear the clicking sound? It opened the valve. There was no water coming out, because the timer solved the problem. Let's override the timer for this true positive test case. There you go, it's working as expected. You may be wondering, why would this work? It's because in total darkness, it won't detect any movement of the tree. It only detects the body heat of the animals. Look at the raccoons, wait for it. Boom, the raccoons were running away. If you really decided to put it on the back of your pickup truck, here is what you need. You need a ratcheting cargo bar. Again, secure it using my favorite releasable zip tie. There you go. I believe it is safe to drive around. It matches perfectly on the Honda Ridge line. Awesome. I hope this project can help you to drive the raccoons away. If you find some good information in this video, give this a thumbs up. My goal is to inspire more people into DIY. You may also want to check out other videos on my channel. I am pretty sure you will love them. Remember to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.